This, 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 this message is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. Continue to carry out the following instructions. The broadcast will quiet at this time for your safety. All television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming to carry this special message. We'll do it live! Live! live. Hello guys, Jeff from Studios here to give you a Let's Look At video. This is a little series in this channel where I just uh, show you guys um, so, uh, my uh, Jeff and Taylor uh, episodes and just go with you page by page telling you the behind the scenes stuff and letting you know what was on my mind when I wrote this episode and drew it. And I have a special guest with me. For the first time ever, somebody else is commentating with me as, I'm, uh, as we're looking through episode 15. And she is Rosengard. You may have seen her in my um, uh, Okisorakon video. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> yep. She is right here because she actually helped me with this episode. She, um, When I was pressed for time, she volunteered to, uh, to type in the lettering. Yep, a lot of the dialogue and the speech bubbles. And that was all fun, having to like align that in, in design. I have some experience of that in the background with my degree in architecture and interior design. Well, it's a minor in architecture, but still counts. And so that was one of the programs I was I had to learn when I was in college. Plus, you could always just learn it for free, like just check out YouTube videos or something like that. I'm pretty sure you won't have to pay as much as I had to pay going through college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, college was the first time I've, I've looked at InDesign, and then when I first saw it, I'm like, well, I'm, not, I'm never going to need this, but it turns out it's uh, the main tool I use for lettering. Mm -hmm. You can still letter using Club Studio Paint, but I just prefer uh, InDesign because it's more type-friendly, I guess. So, yeah, without further ado, let's look at episode 15. This is the cover, and wouldn't you know it, this is actually a, uh, a remake of the very first cover. The very first cover is this right here. It looks just like this. Oh uh, yes, I remember you um, commented on how hard foreshortening is and yeah, I, I have problems with foreshortening too. <laughs> yep, it it doesn't look right at all. <laughs> nope. Perspective is off. Her feet should be kind of disappearing mm -hmm. if we're looking right above her. And Jeff and Taylor right there uh, in normal clothes because in the original script they were gonna save David like right out of the audience, they're gonna run into it, uh, run into the show, and then save him as he's kind of getting married to Starla. But um, I changed it. I changed it to so they're gonna be um, performing kind of on, in the circus because this ep this episode is called Circus Stars. So I thought it would be fun and it'll make more sense to have Jeff and Taylor and Zach uh, perform, do some circus stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm glad I made that uh, that change. Yeah, I definitely did enjoy the color scheme. Um, I got to see at least some of the process work when you were first uh, starting the cover page. Um, some of the pre-sketches and then reference photos and then finally getting in all the color scheme. And I remember you also told me that you didn't like having to do the people in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always a pain whenever it comes to any type of comic format, whether it's a manga or a comic or anything, drawing wide audiences sucks. Yep, you can so tell. You can zoom in right there, yeah, you can see lots of little happy people. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> lots of Slendermans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You really can't see their faces that much because of the lighting, you know? That's circus lighting. You know, you don't want to true. look at the audience. True, that is true. Even in a professional circus, yeah, the lighting it would definitely hide a lot of people's faces when you're in the audience. Yep. I've been on stage before. Hmm. Get a lot of strange fright, did you? Um, no, not really. <laughs> uh, it was all natural. Okay. <laughs> I was in the musical. Oh, I'm guessing it was a school musical when yep. you were a kid? And I was a senior. In oh. high school. Oh, okay, so it was a high school. I was thinking elementary. <laughs> no. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was thinking elementary. Elementary, my dear friend, elementary. <laughs> I did, I, did I, I was in a few plays in elementary school, but they were just, you know, wishy-washy plays. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Popper's Penguins or something else, I don't know. 
Anyway, let's let's get into this. <laughs> <our> first page. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, actually, it's the summary page. I chose Lemon because it's basically her turn. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I put characters on this uh, spotlight or in this hole in the brick wall, it's usually in the order of appearance. Yeah, so it was Gloria last time, and then it's Lemon. Mm-hmm. So it's 16. 16, I might have, um, I think it's Cassidy. I'll have Cassidy on there. Yeah. And it's rated PG, 12 enough for mild language, mild violence, suggestive themes, and scary clowns. <laughs> scary clown. <laughs> <laughs> I always add a little joke and a warning at the end. Mm -hmm. Either scary clowns, dumb cops, um... Something, something, something like that. is just ridiculous. <laughs> Loud quacking. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a f fun little tasteful detail that's just subtle in the background. Where if you're like, you're like a game of Where's Waldo, when you find it, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to add that with those little fun things. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we are. First page. Yes. <clears throat> right at the at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Where they're going? Where they're gonna go see the circus? Just want to establish the characters that we'll see: Cindy, Maria, and David. Jeff and Taylor, right here. The, the, these are the main five, the main five characters that appear in almost every episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the first time we see um, the first and only time we see the founder of uh, Frisbee's traveling circus, who is Starla's uh, grandfather. Mm-hmm. And David, you know, he just likes a circus because, you know, he wants to see the freaks. And I have three out of, you know, do dozens of freaks here. I, I was, I admit, I didn't want to draw all of them because I felt lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, when you press for time, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. But I do like the 80s couple. Yep, that was a good poster that you made. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was putting in the wording uh, in the dialogue balloons the first time around. Um, many times I was going through trying to make sure that there were no grammar errors. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and of course, with the way that um, that David talks, I know that you know he's New York, but at the same time I was sitting here just being like, "Is that a grammar error? Or is that just him like just being him?" Some <laughs> some parts it was easy to tell, and other parts I'm like, "Okay, was that intentional or is that a grammar error?" <laughs> Uh, most of the time it's just intentional, because that's how he speaks, mm -hmm. but you've read my stuff. Yep. You see lots of... Yep, see a lot of it. Yeah, there's lots of typos. Oh boy. I actually introduced him to the uh, to the control I button in InDesign. In case anyone ever wants to know, or anyone actually does use InDesign, if you want to do check spelling, control I. I had to learn that the hard way in one of my classes when one in college when one of my um, colleagues was just like, oh, you know, check your spelling, just like, uh, you know, control I. And I'm like, wait, what? No one, no one told me this. Yep. So that's helpful. Uh, but I don't know the Mac. Uh, I don't know, uh, like, uh, Squash, the Mac. Squash, Apple, I. Yeah, I don't, like I don't know Mac. If you have InDesign for Mac, sorry, I don't know the control shortcut <coughs> for it. I just know PC. It's control I. And it'll check all your spelling. Back in elementary school, we just call it squash, apple, and then letter. Oh. It's that it's that weird symbol. Instead of the windows, it's that weird, weird symbol you have on, on Macs. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> All right, so here they are anyway. <laughs> I'm just laughing at this panel here where David's like, they don't serve no beer here. So, well, yeah. duh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like the, uh, uh, the popcorn... Uh, bucket here with the clown face. The popcorn of the clown face. Yep. Like David, the... don't! You're eating his brains! <laughs> I just like the... I just like to add something happy when a character is angry, you know. Mm -hmm. When there's drama, I like to have like a happy, goofy... Um, it's kind of like the emoticon where it's just sitting there like, eat! <laughs> oh, happy. <laughs> yep. I remember when you told me, when you first read the script, when I just added the sound effects in there, you told me it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> I did think it was cute. I was like, eh. <laughs> onomatopoeia. It is important. Whether, once again, comic or manga, onomatopoeia helps actually uh, create more atmosphere and sometimes uh, more drama for your pages, depending on what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, we have 
Captain Starla. She's making her debut here. Mm-hmm. And I know that you said you had a specific size of font, but I always tried to make sure that I at least could fill in the dialogue balloons. Yep. It was a matter of balancing the word with balancing the negative space. Like, you know, too much, it's always too crowded. Mm -hmm. Too little, it's just like, um... <laughs> yep. If it's too little, you, you think that they're whispering. Yes, exactly. Also, I love their faces here. Mm-hmm. I know that you added in a few other people right there in, in the audience that were laughing. Uh-huh. Most of these people are random, but then mm -hmm. you'll see... Uh, see him right there. <laughs> you'll see uh, Lincoln Loud from the Loud House. Mm -hmm. Just add him here. Clever. Yep. Surprise, I didn't... <laughs> At first, the lady with the note, with right next to him, I honestly thought that that might have been Pearl from Steven Universe. <laughs> it, it, I'm sorry, it was the nose, but then I was like, oh, no, wait, she's a lot more lighter skinned. <laughs> there is a character called Maxine who people thought look like Pearl. Oh. Yeah, she's the star hammer member with the very long nose. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, so here we are. Yeah, this... Huge performance. This panel. This panel was a... Uh, was kind of hard to get down. I wanted a... I wanted a big uh, panel right here just to see... So something dynamic, you know? Mm-hmm. The, the performers just, just run in here while uh, Nine Inch Nails... Is playing, yeah. mm -hmm. playing the song in the background, yeah, yeah. that you put up there. <laughs> yeah, I know that uh, when you were first drawing that panel, you're just like, oh, geez, trying to like, you know, put in everything to make it moving, putting in all the people coming in. And once again, like I said before, when you're drawing a large crowd of people, it's just like, oh god, <laughs> yep. this is gonna take a while. It is. It, it does. The, the elephant rider here. Which... The, his pose is perfect. <laughs> There's total perfection right there. Like, mm, yes, you're, you're killing it, man. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> he is. It's so it's so weird because this is the only time I draw I drew him. He doesn't appear any time uh, anywhere, anywhere else in the else. comic. I'm like, this is good enough, you know. Well, hey, you know what? He only had a small bit of the spotlight, but the camera loved him. <laughs> <laughs> yes course panel here to show everybody impressed except for David mm -hmm. and then the transition in between time I remember when I was putting in the words right there I was sitting there like confused being like wait is this still happening oh sorry that was my phone it's like is this uh like is this still part of the show and then I'm like oh no wait wait and then I had to look at like the way that starless clothes were and I'm like oh wait this is a transitioning of Time, like a certain amount of time had gone through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at first I was confused, especially because the spacing between the t panel in between the area where their their faces are impressed and in between the next two panels below, the spacing's just as equal as the other spacing between all the other horizontal panels, so mm -hmm. I assumed that it was still in that same amount of time, like time hadn't passed, and I was like, oh, wait. Yep. <laughs> so I was a little confused right there. Normally, I I'm just used to... Um, seeing if there was a passage of time but the passage of time was on the same page it wasn't on the next page i would normally see some people be clever in which they would have a more dramatic space in between the horizontal line of the one panel and the next panel if they couldn't put it in like another block saying 13 hours later or something yep. like that then they would have just a wider space basically indicating that more more time had passed Yep. And then, of course, then there was also that helpful little block right there saying much later. <laughs> yeah. This is how I usually do the passage of time thing Yeah. Uh, with my comic. Um, the, you know, the yellow blocks. But that is a rule in comics where the gutters, uh, uh, depending how... That was the name, the gutters. How, how, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So writer I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it depends how, how big they are to indicate how much time has passed. Sometimes I would use, uh, I would have one thin strip or one thin block of just black. Mm -hmm. Just to show a little, a little fade out uh, and show you time has passed, which you'll see later. Mm -hmm. Also, I just realized now that I'm looking at this again, there's a small bear on a ball. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's the Pixar ball, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I it just is. now noticed that. I was like, oh my god, that's like a small bear cub. Oh god, the mom's gonna be angry. <laughs> he took her cub. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at first it looked like it was something in the distance, but then you're like, no wait, that's even ground. Yep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small bear. 
on the Pixar ball. Mm -hmm. Surprised you didn't have the lamp in there, but then again, that was probably too much copyrighted material. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it would have been too obvious. Yeah, it, it would have been too obvious. Now, before I uh, keep going, mm -hmm. uh, I will show everybody concept art. Um, oh, yes. Designing all these fun characters. Mm hmm I designed the clowns. Mm-hmm. I, when I first made the clowns, I, I didn't want to go with generic-looking clowns. I wanted each member of the circus to have his or her own design and his or her own backstory. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with all my groups, including t t uh, Team Starhammer. Mm -hmm. Every member, we see their faces, we, we learn their names, and we know a little bit of their personality and background. I'm not a big fan of, you know, generic thugs or anything like that. I just... I, I care about, you know, each little character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, they're still people, which is something that sometimes uh, animations, uh, TV series, and yeah, even other comic book writers forget about. It's just like, yeah, the, these thugs are not just your typical thugs. They're still people in the end. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Nice little touch to add. Just a subtle touch. Exactly. So, yeah, when I made up the... the uh, the members of the circus, I just wrote them in a list and their job. Mm -hmm. So Cuddles, he is the balloon clown. Blimp is the fat clown, which if you ever played uh, the video game or watched the movie Batman Returns, there are some clowns that look just like yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. When uh, Tim Burton's Batman Returns with uh, Danny DeVito as Penguin and yep. was it Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, I remember those designs when they came out causing a huge riot. Mm -hmm. And they were actually very interesting, uh, pretty dark designs in my opinion, but still fun. Mm -hmm. How they were all kind of unique from each other. Yep. So yeah, that's a so Blimp is an homage, one of the homages to that to that movie. Oh. Dodard is he's the he's the old clown. I I named him Dodard because uh, what Kim Jong Un called uh, Donald Trump one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So yeah, I, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> Yep, I learned that word, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to call this old clown Dodard. And there's Bagpipe the Scottish Clown. That's it. I'm sure that you probably could have gone with a kilt, but at the same time, you're just like, I don't know how to how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, make him a clown, and yet still make him Scottish. And I'm just like, well, the traditional way would be wearing a kilt, but then it'd be a baggy kilt. But I'm just like, it's a, it's a giant, you know, kilt, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's already flowy enough as it is. <laughs> Let's see. Well, th that would have been a good idea, too. Me, I didn't really, really think. I just thought baggy pants, clowns. <laughs> no, clowns are funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then this next one. Custard. Yeah, he's he's the pie clown. Mm -hmm. He makes pies and throws them at everybody. It looks like he stared into the abyss, and the abyss stared back at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, the scary-looking clown, jabroni. The face you get when you see a spider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm not talking a baby spider, no, I'm talking one of those really ugly kind of ugh, spiders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huntsman spiders. <laughs> ugh. Which are actually fascinating. Honestly, I find those ones fascinating. I'm talking about like your regular, your typical hobo spider, your typical brown house. Oh, yeah, yeah, those ones are just, ugh. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> back to this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking about, we're not talking about arachnophobia here. We're talking about, what was the phobia for clowns? Uh, chlorophobia. Chlorophobia, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had, okay. I had, I had an, uh, one more female clown, uh, Popolo. She's the um, she juggles and she does some acrobatic stuff. Very flexible. Oh yeah. Bonko, the boxing clown. I actually got his the idea for a boxing clown because I could have sworn I've seen boxing clowns when you played the video game Batman Forever. Not Batman Returns. Oh, was that for the Super Nintendo? Yep. I remember playing that game, yeah. Batman Returns is a much, much better game than <laughs> Batman Forever mm -hmm. for the Super Nintendo. Yeah. You know, I highly recommend Batman Returns. It's a nice beat-em-up. Batman, Batman Forever is a slow beat-em-up, but it had boxing clowns. I with... remember them. They're like, they're like doing this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I couldn't get that. I only got as far as the second stage in that game. Yeah, it's a hard game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Then there's Jiggle Pants. He's the, you know, he looks like, like a traditional jester, mm -hmm. but he juggles. 
Yes, with turkey breasts in his hands. <laughs> or drumsticks on turkey breasts. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> to, to juggle turkey breasts. That's impressive. It's like slippery everywhere. It's like, oh, you got salmonella all over your hands. <laughs> Don't worry. They, they cook it first. They cook oh, so it. they're already deep fried and everything. <laughs> they cook it, and then if it gets on the floor, well, they'll just feed it to the lions anyway. So. <laughs> Those poor lions suffering mm. from cholesterol problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, next. And these bottom three, it's uh, Lobo, mm -hmm. which means wolf in Spanish. I just called him Lobo because, and uh, yeah, he's a big clown, the leader of the clowns. Very intimidating. I could have swore in Castlevania, uh, the Nintendo 64 game, saying the word Lobo was like offensive to the wolf character you were playing. Oh, really? Yeah, something like that. I don't know, but that's like, uh, they called him either a Cur or a Lobo or something like that. <laughs> but yeah. that was like Castlevania back in the day. Mm -hmm. no, I know that wasn't a good game, though. <laughs> the Nintendo 64, Castlevania 64, whatever it was called. Yeah. But yeah, I just remember that word Lobo, and I'm just like, hmm, wasn't that an insult? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the game, but it just means wolf in Spanish. Mm, okay. And then we have the strong man, who is cleverly named Starman Strongman. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Starman Strongman. Star Strong <laughs> yep. Again, his design is like the strong man in Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. But he is uh, Starla's uncle. Mm. I see that he has like uh, some armor, like an armor around some of his belted areas. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that he kind of look. It kind of looks like a, a, a like a the, the kind of armor that Vegeta wears. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I was like yeah. trying to pinpoint it. I wanted to say Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I know he didn't wear something like that. I was like, oh wait, it was Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would have been funny. And then the last guy here, um, O'Grinder, mm -hmm. uh, he is the organ grinder, but I just named him O'Grinder. Mm -hmm. And again, he is uh, based off of the organ grinder from Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. Mostly from the movie, not the game. Yeah. He's just, he's just a random boss in the game, but in the movie, you get to see him, hear him, mm -hmm. and later in the comic, you'll see... That uh, he looks like just like him. Like I said, it's an homage, people. Yeah, I remember you have mentioned. We can all like. It's safe to say right now that yes, Batman Returns was definitely a huge inspiration for the design of the clowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spoilers! It's like, well, it's obvious. Yeah. All right. So now. Okay. That I... So now that we got that out of the way. Yeah. We. Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to sound rude. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> It's it's cool. It's cool. You you. It's, there's no way you can be more rude than uh, than Starla here. We oh see, yes. We see that she mistreats her uh, her companions, her her clowns. Mm hmm But you know, it's 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 an everyday it. kind of recurrence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing how Bonko or Bonko. Uh, no, that's not Bonko. Yeah. Cuddles. Cuddles. Yeah. That's how Cuddles uh, reacts. Poor guy. He probably broke his mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She hit him so hard, his mind snapped. <laughs> That's why he has that emoticon face of hey, in the bottom <laughs> panel. So we get introduced with uh, with um, Miley, yeah, Miley the clown. This is her, just normal mm -hmm. without makeup, and she has a pet hen, Henrietta. <laughs> Henrietta. Yep. Have she... you ever actually picked up a real chicken in life? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I have. <laughs> There's... It's hard. It's, um, if they're relaxed and docile like Henrietta right here is, actually they're quite cute and adorable, but if they don't want to get picked up, they'll let you know about it. They'll flap everywhere, you have feathers flying, mm -hmm. <laughs> their talents hurt if they <laughs> scratch you, yes. <laughs> yep. Miley, she loves chickens, so she knows how to handle them. All right, right here. This panel, uh, Wendy from uh, Fairy Tale has a little cameo. Oh, yeah, there she is. I almost thought, like, in the background where that green suited guy is, uh -huh. I thought that was the Riddler. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought that was the Riddler. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, no. Riddler doesn't have that. He has a bowler hat. <laughs> Might as well be. We have a lot of Batman references. Yeah, never mind the question mark. For me, That what threw me off was the hat. <laughs> <laughs> the Riddler is selling balloons. Yep. Yeah, you got a couple cameos I know in here too, which uh, is always uh, something you've said is fun yep. to add in every one of your chapters. 
Sure he is. And uh, our, and uh, we have Starla going out in disguise, but she's wearing clothes from Edgar the Fabulous Hobo. And I actually designed her in my sketchbook. We'll see right here. Oh, yes. In that page right there. There she is. Mm -hmm. Yep. We also see sketches of Miley. Mm hmm With and without makeup. Yep, and there's her hen. Yep. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, yep, she's going out in disguise. And then a random guy comes out. I just made him up. But yeah, we see more um, of Captain Starla interacting with the normies. Mm-hmm. She tries to charge him for the for the picture. <laughs> Fifty bucks. I'm just like, hey, mm -hmm. girl, that's cheap. You should have charged a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't think highly of uh, of her um, patrons, mm -mm. her customers. Yeah, as we've seen as how she treated her own staff. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when she sees David for the first time, she immediately gets infatuated with him. <laughs> and immediately David has this uh, similar face that I'm thinking of in that scene, if anyone's ever seen the series called Agretzko. <laughs> when she saw someone that she thought maybe she was actually having a crush on them, and all of a sudden their face changed from just like a dead face to all of a sudden, tling, <laughs> perfect, cute, kawaii mm -hmm. anime male face. Yep. <laughs> so I thought that was a good touch. <laughs> yep. And I have this little sound effect here. I got it from Fairy Tale Anime. Mm -hmm. It goes like this. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> if it's animated, I want that sound effect. Right when, when, when we see David with this, it's like silly fan service. Whenever that happens, mm -hmm. whenever there's a silly fan service of a half naked dude, mm -hmm. they always have that sound effect, which you know I love. So I got the heart eyes. You see heart pupils. You see in hentai all the time. <laughs> I was actually about to point out, not not about the hentai, I was actually about to be like, fun fact people, the uh, statue of David, the pupils of David, actually has hearts. Really? Michelangelo carved hearts into the pupils of David. Look at that. They're actually hearts, but they, he did it probably on purpose for the sake of like lighting, because you know when a lighting hits a sculpture, it casts certain shadows, so in order to get the illusion of thinking that you're staring at a pupil from the shadows, when in reality if you look closer, it's their hearts. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I know I was going to mention that, but no, you know, keeping it classy. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh well. Anything goes, basically, almost. Almost. <laughs> There's a line. It's yep. just really dirty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I don't know if carnies, or carny is a bad word or not, but um, I have, yeah, I don't care. David saying it. No, and David, yeah, he is kind of insensitive about a lot of things, so it makes sense that he would say something that could be offensive, and then it's just like he wouldn't know about it. He's kind of derp. <laughs> yep. He's ignorant. Yep. You know, he's kind of likable, but we know that he's kind of a jerk. That's why uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people like him. A lot of my fans like him. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, we, so right here, we know Starla is a, is a, is a bad person, but mm -hmm. I want to show a more... Uh, tender side and people will be like, will be like, oh, this is cute. She looks cute here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's generally, you know, she generally likes this guy. Well, hey, going back to what I said previously with the thugs, at the end of the day, they're still people. It's the same thing with villains. At the end of the day, they're still people. They just got a messed up sense of reality. Mm-hmm. So, uh, ringmaster. She's she is the ringmaster of the circus. Uh, when I first wrote this, I, I wrote down ring leader, mm -hmm. which t isn't correct. It's, it's not the correct term. It's ringmaster. Because mm -hmm. whenever you say ring leader, that's usually the leader of a of a drug um, thing. Oh, okay. For, of a crime syndicate, you know. I was about to be like, cite your source, young man. <laughs> what leads you to this decision? <laughs> I want it written down on the paper, just like our English teacher used to do when he had to cite our sources for essays. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up on Google. That's not a source that my teacher would get angry. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. 
Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I didn't uh, think about that. Yep. Ringmaster versus Ringleader. Yeah, well, when you type in Ringmaster on Google Images, you see the, the, the typical Ringmaster on a surface. Mm hmm. <clears throat> but a Ringleader. It's more like a crime syndicate word. Yeah. Understandable. I mean, I'm pretty sure they use the word ringleader for, like, a circus, but I'm like, I might as well go with the, with the safer word, ringmaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, Starless Badge, he ain't that bad. Yeah, true. He ain't working for a star hammer. She doesn't hand out drugs, she <laughs> hands out open and palm slaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, she, good, thing, good thing she didn't slap uh, the frog man. Yeah, here he is. This is kind of different to do. He looks, he doesn't look human at all. I was actually kind of wondering if you were referencing another cartoon, because for some reason when I looked at this frog, I was thinking of an old 90s cartoon, but I can't recall it with like this frog in it. <laughs> but I didn't know if maybe that's what your inspiration for this frog and this character when you created him or not. I, I had no clue. I've, uh, maybe I'm thinking of Slippy in, in that <laughs> panel right there. Like, help! Get this guy off of me! <laughs> Maybe that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I use Slippy as a little um, uh, reference, but, uh -huh. but he is just a made-up character. Okay. All his, all, all his own. Let's see. And, of course, Jeff and Taylor have to ruin everything. She gets angry. Mm-hmm. And Jeff just loves circus peanuts. <laughs> mm, circus peanuts. I wonder what they're made of. Sugared wax and packing peanuts, not go away. Yeah. <laughs> the styrofoam peanuts that just stick to you. <laughs> Jeff, yeah. they stick to you, which means they're going to stick to you as well. Mm -hmm. You can't get them off! That'll be tricky to digest. Oh, God, I don't want to imagine that. <laughs> yep. So the boys want a picture with her. She hesitates. Oh. <laughs> Until David is like, oh, come on, I'll, sh I'll take the picture. I don't, I don't know what kind of accent that was. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be like, um... <laughs> I don't know what kind of accent that was. That's a good try. <laughs> That's a good try. <laughs> hey, I'll take the picture, you know? Forget about it. Oh, man. I'd have to have my sister-in-law at least to <laughs> help tell me about that, because she actually is all the way from Boston, Massachusetts, so she has that actual accent. Mm -hmm. David was originally from New York City. Yeah, New York City, so... Yeah, and then he moved to Somerville. Yeah, well, I'm from... <laughs> yeah, well, I'm from Utica, and I don't hear anyone use that expression. Oh, no, it's an upstate Albany <laughs> expression. I see. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, yeah, David has to go, and then mm -hmm. uh, Starla's like, oh, no. Then she finds out that Jeff and Taylor are neighbors with him, so she gets the idea. Uh, delightfully devilish idea. <laughs> delightfully devilish idea. Just by the look in her eyes, it's just like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Miley comes back with the funnel cakes, and just the, the chicken looks so weird. <laughs> I was actually looking at the funnel cake, I'm just like, hey, you got some funnel cake. And I'm like, I thought that was a pizza, but okay. <laughs> if it's, okay, guys, girl, ga and gals. If you see something that looks like funnel cake, but at the same time you confuse it for pizza, maybe you shouldn't eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's house. Yeah, this panel right here, I admit, it's so weird to, to look at. Just the composition. Oh, really? Of the living room? Yeah, and the angle, because I... It's so... I, I usually don't have this angle, or looking um, at this wall whenever we're at Jeff's house. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jeff has to speak first, and I don't know, it was like, this is how I imagined it, you know, in my mm -hmm. head. Jeff is in this spot for some reason. Oh, well, so, uh, yeah. So I want to establish that all the characters are in, uh, are in his house, like mm -hmm. the main five, so I had to put Taylor's uh, <laughs> uh, hand right here. <laughs> so his hand just got cropped out. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's like, hey, I'm here too, and David's like, what the hell, you know. The yeah. hell's these bozos doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if anything, uh, that's the fun part of uh, fun fact for anyone who's doing it in comicking. If you are having problems with your background scenery, that's the fun part about dialogue balloons. You can hide the background scenery if you're mm -hmm. clever enough at where you place your dialogue balloons. And hands. And hands too. Yeah, but the only the important rule is movement, flow, and consistency. 
Mm -hmm. So if your balloons are all over the place, even though you're trying to hide some stuff because you maybe you're trying to be uh, a little bit lazy on drawing the background, well, that's just not going to fly. <laughs> it has to at least line up with some movement. That is true. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right, so David, we see a little bit of tiny foreshadowing. It's like, mm -hmm. huh, me? Join a friggin' circus? Ha ha ha, I'm too handsome for that li lifestyle. I think he's been hit many too many times with that wrench of his. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, and, and the panel right before that, Cindy kind of calls him out with the uh, carny. Yeah, word. with the word that it's they like, said. Really, you're going to call her that? It's an endearing word to them. I'm just using it out of respect for their culture or something. Or something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's always a, a fun little um, question. It's just like, how do you know when you, like, you're you ignorant of something and you're insulting someone, but you're ignorant about it and you don't know because you're, you're either uneducated like David or you're just plain oblivious. Or And then there's the other type of insult where it's just like, no, that was intentional. Like, you know that that is a bad word or something like that. Or what you're saying about someone's lifestyle <laughs> is just not... Um, I guess the term would be not culture mm -hmm. <laughs> with, their <Yeah>. <laughs> with their culture. Yep. <laughs> so then, yeah, that's always a different type of offense. It's just like, well, can you get angry at someone who's a, who's oblivious, or do you get angry at someone who's intentionally doing it? Or you could just get angry at both. <laughs> mm -hmm. If it was me, I would, I would get angry at somebody who's doing it uh, purposely. Purposely. Yeah. yeah. All right, right here. This he's singing a song. He's singing an actual song. Oh, oh. WrestleMania, canvas ain't our life. Pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> Just walking. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to comment on the uh, house in the background. Yes. My goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, wow, who lives there? I bet you, uh, whoever it is, the, if there's a female in there, she uses crystals for healing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that is a really funky house. <laughs> Actually, that's David's house. David lives in the Scope house. That's what, you know, bottle of Scope? Scope mouthwash? Oh, Scope mouthwash. <laughs> I made this house when I was a kid. Yeah, so that's like, true, though. I, no, I'm not faulting you for that. <laughs> I'm just like, that is an interesting house. And, you know, being from interior design and architecture, I was just thinking about how the architects would say that they would design all sorts of crazy designs, but the ones that really hated them were the engineers because they had to figure out how to make sure that the house that's designed that way stands up and doesn't mm -hmm. fall over. So they had to figure out the hard part, which was all the math. And I was like, oh, the engineers must have been so angry making that house. Yep, yep. I, I tell you what, last week when I, I actually made floor plans of this house. Oh, yeah? And I'm like, okay, how does this work? I'm trying to figure out where to put stairs, but I think I got it. Mm -hmm. It's a one-bedroom house. Perfect for David. But yeah, this song, WrestleMania, it's mm -hmm. actually... The theme song for WrestleMania, WWE WrestleMania, when they had a, uh, you know, back in the days, back in the 90s, they had that. It's just David changed the lyrics a bit to let WrestleMania, because really, WWE isn't that good these days. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. Um, the the or, or Grinders monkey found David, so she drew a little map, which I forgot to draw on this uh, Oops. paper. Oops. <laughs> Well, like my teacher said, don't point out your mistakes. Because, <laughs> yeah. technically speaking, if you had to mention that, someone could have easily just thought that he was handing her the piece of paper, but the information's on the underside. Yeah, I was going to mention that. <laughs> but because you point out your mistake, yep. That's what the one rule I learned, at least from my colleagues in college. Don't yeah. point out your mistakes. They'll think it's intentional. <laughs> it's canon. The map is on the other side here. <laughs> you know, it's canon. <laughs> All right, and yeah, old grinder you see in his face, he he kind of looks like the, the organ grinder from um, mm -hmm. Batman Returns. So the clowns, send in the clowns. Send in the clowns. Yep. They've been. Dave's a really heavy sleeper. <laughs> yep. Like, my God, they didn't, he didn't even feel him take take him out of his bed. Yep, that's right. That was how and that was nice of them to bring the sheets too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wait, he's not freezing in the car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As he sleeps in his underwear, Joe's in his underwear. And I thought this was a cool panel. Oh yep, there. Uh, one of them, I know it's the Jester, but when I first saw it, I thought that was Sideshow Bob. <laughs> because of the silhouette. It's, it's the silhouette. I was like, Sideshow Bob? Hmm. 
Maybe, you know, Sideshow Bob would be in the circus for a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, until he tried to, like, murder the <laughs> ringmaster. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so... And that was a Sideshow Bob grow. So. <laughs> yeah. so the next morning, I had, I had some fun creating the... Uh, oh, a little caravan. Yep. Or, yeah. The, the trailer or something. Yeah. So, David awakes in Starla's uh, that bed. He's, like, so surprised. So we see David. Some fan service right here. Mm-hmm. Also, I uh, see that Starla sleeps with pink socks. I was like, hey, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of interesting. She sleeps with pink socks. Mm-hmm. Her feet must get cold at night. Yep. Well, then again, when you're sleeping in a caravan, which I know doesn't have the greatest of insulation, you probably need to bundle up. <laughs> yep, that's right. Sometimes I sleep with socks, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Depends how cold it is. Yep. I think this is what we call uh, the Yandere situation, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is just like, oh, crap, she's going crazy. Yep. <laughs> she is. And you notice in this panel here, she kind of looks at his crotch. Oh, the uh, connection between, like, the eye. Okay. Yes. I added... <clears throat> that was on purpose. That was on purpose? Okay. Because yes. I was sitting there just being like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, David wants to leave, but the strong man stops him by putting him into a little chokehold. I actually looked at a reference for that, because that's kind of hard to draw. Yeah, once again, drawing more than just one person, especially when they're, like, in a fight or something. <laughs> I'm just going to smack the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I don't know if that caught it or not. It's cool. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. okay. That's okay. Uh, looking up references is what I was going to say, just because, <laughs> yeah, the, whether it's fight scenes, dancing, or just two characters is involved with each other, like, yeah, it's difficult trying to figure out, okay, where do the limbs place and trying to make sure that an arm doesn't look broken or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> and the thump right here. It's a little callback to a, real, a running gag in Volume 4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we see J and T, they, they go back to the circus. And they brought some friends. They brought their friends up Marquise, Jerry, Sarah, and Zach, who are based off of real-life friends of mine. Hmm. Yep, so now they're going to bring their friends at least to see the circus as well. Yep. Starla is happy. She's still a bit of a, a biatch, but she's still in a good mood. Hey, she got a superstar on her chest, so da She's invincible. Yep, you got that. It's a yeah. It is a star man from a from, from, from Mario. Mario. Yep. So she dressed David. I don't know how. Um, when he was unconscious, I guess. I was gonna say she could have one of her lackeys do it, or she did it. One of the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she uh, taped him up so he he wouldn't escape. There are ways to get out of duct tape, though. <laughs> it's it's difficult, but there is a way to get out of it. Yeah. Also, green duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Fluorescent green duct tape. Let's see, right here. Uh, oh, yeah. We see that Miley is a nice person. So she's like, uh, why are you doing this? And then Starlock gets very possessive, protective of, of uh, David. Mm -hmm. You can tell she is uh, the jealous type. Jealous, protective, yeah. all, all those things. You only gotta say the word Yandere and everyone gets it. We're <laughs> just yep. like, okay. <laughs> she crazy, we know. <laughs> yep. Yandere. Yeah, but at least Miley, uh, she's at least being smart about how she's approaching this situation, seeing as how we can see that Starla's getting a little quote-unquote love sick, mm -hmm. I guess I should say. <laughs> yep. Yep, so... At least she didn't turn on Miley, though. I'm just like, oh, that would have been really low to turn on your own best friend if you were to do that. Mm -hmm. So Miley, ha I think Miley handled herself very well. That's what I, my point I was trying to make. Yes. She, Way to go, girl. She did. You <laughs> Exactly. You and your hen, you know how to talk to people. Yep. This hen is like, this bitch, crazy. <laughs> the hen's sitting there just being like, hmm, I wonder if I have any other new scarves that were crocheted for me recently. <laughs> <laughs> or the hen's thinking about seed. <laughs> food, 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 food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, Sorry. This, uh, it's okay. This picture right here, mm. I made it separately. It's supposed to be a, you know, magazine cover. Mm -hmm. So we see a little, uh, a little bit of a fun information here. New weapon. 
it's really powerful, especially against living things. <laughs> That's uh, from Resident Evil. Yep. Uh, the, the very first one, the original. Circus Sisters, an interview with the star siblings of Frisbee's Traveling Circus. And this is the very, very first time I drew her. Um, oh, yeah, her sister right there. Yeah, Lieutenant Luna. Ah. So she has a happy uh, crescent moon. But Luna is much worse than Starla. Mm-hmm. Top 30 jobs in the world. Mm-hmm. And Alabama's <laughs> damn fault. It's not worse than Florida somehow. Yeah. Sorry to anyone who's actually living in Alabama. Yep. <laughs> who's watching this, but it was it's a joke. Yep. <laughs> it, it's a joke. It's a joke. If you are from Alabama and and, and, and if you're a Jeff Taylor fan, you're awesome. Mm-hmm. There's, there's lots of cool people from Alabama. There's Leonard Skinner, Deontay Wilder, um, Diabetes from Retzapre. That's an actual person's name? No. I thought, okay, I was all about to be like, um, that's <laughs> Diabetes. <laughs> that can't be someone's name. No, Diabetes is from Retzapre, and I added their little, little, little Retzapre. Oh, um, nice little fun cameo right there in the back of the magazine. Yep. Oh, cool. Because I like to listen to their podcasts. Their old podcast while um, inking. So let's see. Not much to say here. I mean, shows, plot. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just that's all you gotta say. It's just like plot happens. <laughs> yeah. Plot happens. Uh, crowd gonna enter the big tent, the big circus tent. Any other fun people cameoing in the crowd? Um, or no, did you just draw right. random people? I just drew random people. Ah. Uh. Let's see here. Yep, so we see right here, this is where it starts to turn, where J&T meets uh, Miley, just mm -hmm. out of nowhere. So Taylor asks what's wrong with her. So she's like, oh, uh, I shouldn't be telling you, but, and then she gets uh, interrupted mm -hmm. by the clowns, because she has to go. Then um, I had to have some sort of reason for them to chase after her. Mm -hmm. So the little scarf flew out. No, I ran a scarf! <laughs> that thing's too adorable! <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so, for the um, sake of Henrietta, we will return this scarf. For exactly. the sake of all chicken kind. <laughs> exactly. So I thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think that's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but J and T, especially Taylor, you know. Yeah, Taylor would be kind enough to want to return it. Yeah. Even if it's something small or whatnot, he's just like, yeah, but, you know, she could have made it. Mm -hmm. Probably, maybe it was given to her maybe as a gift. It could be something special. Yep. And it's a chicken, so give it back. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, this is hilarious, where they find David in the... Uh... Oh, yes, in the caravan. Yep. So they're confused on why he's there. So they have some horrible guesses, saying that, um... Did you join the circus? Cool. Are you practicing to escape to be an escape artist? So yeah. So I had to put Zach in here. You know, Zach just appears. Just pops out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. So just had to have some a little bit of explanation here. And right here, I had to draw. I have to draw them from the back because in this panel, I had Jeff draw, um, speaking first. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. If, if uh, Zach is on his right side, then he. Re so, so I have to put. I have to have this little view vantage point. Ah. Uh. Okay. Nope, so we see here that for <laughs> David. Uh, David will have to wait. He's gonna have to. It's just like, sorry buddy. Even though I'm just sitting here being like, get a rock. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to quote the Simpsons right there. Oh, I left my keys in there. <laughs> get a rock. <laughs> just yeah. get a rock. Yep. But, as we can see, Zach's being a little bit mischievous. <laughs> yep. Yep, Zach wants to uh, infiltrate the, the circus for some reason. So Jeff, Jeff had the uh, more uh, plausible solution to, because Starla kidnapped him. Yeah. Jeff was like, let's call the police. Call the cops, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then Zach said, oh, the, all the cops in town are scared of clowns. And then Jeff's like, stupid chlorophobic cops. Looks like we're doing things on our own. Yeah. So, <laughs> you see the cops. Hey, it's a real disease! <laughs> <laughs> Knowing the cops in Somerville, yeah, they would say that. <laughs> so, so Taylor grabs a little circus cannon out of nowhere. Yeah, I like how on the side of the cannon, by the way, you just have FFF, so I'm just sitting here <laughs> thinking, 
of the fuse count going down, sizzling away, and then you just, in your mind, you're thinking, <laughs> leading up to you saying the F word, <laughs> as the fuse is getting slow, shorter and shorter, and then boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good sound for, um, for like a fuse mm -hmm. going down. Alright, yep. so... I like Taylor's idea, though. <laughs> like, when I first saw that, I'm just like, no, I agree with Taylor. Use the cannon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, Zach apparently wants to do things his own way. Yep. So, yeah, the the other three, they're, they're, they're ready to sit down. And they're about to um, enjoy the circus. And I thought it'll be a very fun um, gag. Mm -hmm. Whenever we see Marquise, he has something else. He has, he has something to eat. It's like eating something. <laughs> so random like we see popcorn here and in the, ne the next time we see him he has something else he's always got food in his mouth that's the joke yeah. <laughs> and something ridiculous you know something you know I, I thought that was a nice cartoon gag mm -hmm. so uh, we assume that they went to a little dressing room mm -hmm. and so they dress up in these um outfits these ridiculous outfits taylor is supposed to be like patty the power pixie from keenan and kel Mm -hmm. That one episode where they went to that comic convention and Kel dressed up like Patty the Power Pixie. So the, his costume was kind of like that. Oh, so that's the inspiration behind that. Mm -hmm. And then Zach, meanwhile, has this like nice, flo <laughs> nice flower wig. Yeah. <laughs> you look at all those flowers in there. <laughs> yep. It's a little pattern right, in Clip Studio Paint, so I just wanted to use it. Yeah, might as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here thinking about how he puts on the wig, thinking it's a wig, and then all of a sudden you just see the flowers. <laughs> just like fall off. It's like, no, it was a crown of flowers, and you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, I remember this uh, This took a while to make because of the crowd. The, oh, the yeah. It's so weird. Whenever you have uh, established characters that are mm -hmm. part of a group, you have to remember their colors. You have to remember yes. how they look like. Yep, continuity. That is important, which honestly I see lacking in a lot of TV shows and m more recent comics that mm -hmm. have come out lately. I'm just like, ugh. I really wish there was more continuity. And which I, by the way, I thank you for that. Like, when I read your stuff, I see continuity. I'm like, thank you! Yep. Some of these professional uh, man manga makers and comic makers and even television series that even you just watch on Netflix, they forget that. And I'm just like, um... <laughs> exactly. Now, I probably sound, I'm not gonna lie, I probably sound like a, a, a stupid, uh, picky nerd no, <laughs> saying no, something okay. like that. Like, it's you know, from like, um... That one scene from The Simpsons, where it's just like, when Itch and Scratchy hit the xylophone, and when Scratchy was hit in the rib cage, he's hit the same rib twice and produced a different sound. Are we supposed to believe that this is just a, a magical rib? So I'm, t I'm probably pretty sure I probably sounded like that, but at the same time, at least when it comes to writing and everything, I'm just like, no, continuity is important. It's not like a subtle detail. Continuity is key. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure I probably sounded like that. <laughs> Oh, I, you didn't. You did not. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, I appreciate your continuity in your series. Yeah, yeah continuity. Back, back on topic. <laughs> continuity and consistency. That's what I love in Jeff and Taylor. Mm -hmm. it, it, my, my works, basically. Yep, so we see here that they've snuck in. They ran inside. The clowns are performing. And then uh, Zach is holding this beach ball. Wanna, he wants to juggle with the beach ball. <laughs> Go and shop on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, You no. almost clicked the icon. I was like, oh, do you want to open that up? Yeah. Jeez. Um. Okay, anyway. Um, yep, and we see Taylor's got a nice hula hoop. Yep, that's a nice looking hula hoop. Yep. I had one once. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard. They're hard to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a perfect circle because I use the perfect circle tool. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to draw that big circle because it you'll see it's makes sense yeah i want it to be perfect mm -hmm. yep so here we are they got their axe going on yep lobo is um juggling anvils i just want to point that out because don't drop it <laughs> yeah just want to point out that he's strong yeah bonko he's doing something impressive uh jumping uh 500 jumps per minute yeah that is definitely impressive yep and this guy <laughs> doing something silly. I know he looks silly, and I know that later they commented on how goofy he looked, but I was just like, you try doing that with freaking four hula hoops! That's hard! Mm -hmm. If anything, I, like, applauded Taylor at that moment. I'm like, dude, that's hard. That's hard to do. Yeah. 
Uh, uh -huh. So Starla caught on. She's like, Molly, who was that? I don't know. And Marquise has something else. He, he's uh, he's got something else. Are those? Oh, it's, it's a drumstick. So it's chicken. It's fried chicken. Fried chicken. He has a whole bucket of fried chicken. Wow. How, how, where would he get it? <laughs> they probably had. They're probably selling it. So okay. So we see. Uh, she's uh, talking to her uncle. Mm-hmm. Stowaways, you think? Want me to knock him out? <laughs> yep. And so now it's just like now the game is gonna be on. Yeah, so Jeff got suspicious of Zack. This is just an excuse for Zack to play dress-up. Come on, let's leave him here and we'll bust David out another way. That I was actually happy you pointed out. Yep. <laughs> I was just like, yup, in the end, it's just like, they could have just done this, but for the sake of, like, eliminating some plot holes, it's just like, they got caught up in Zack's uh, charades, basically. Yep. So I'm like, that actually makes it better. <laughs> I always try to fill up my plot holes. Mm-hmm. Yep, so here they've been spotted. Mm-hmm. Just want I, I just like this scene here. <laughs> yeah, poor Jeff, he's like in the middle, like oh shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we see Marquise with a. He's got a hot dog. <laughs> a grilled hot dog. Nice. Yep. With a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Clowns eliminate the trespassers. And Taylor's like, I told you this was a bad idea. <laughs> no, you did not. Yeah, he's like, you agreed to it. And by the way, I still applaud you for that hula hoop act. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just like, that was still good. Yep. So Zach trying to be all dramatic. Oh, yes. <laughs> I just like this. We're here to save my friend's, uh, my dude's friend, Danny. David. David. <laughs> I'm surprised he wouldn't be like, Daniel, the next <laughs> sentence. <laughs> he just doesn't pronounce his name. <laughs> Yeah, the audience doesn't know that Starla is a is a meanie. Yeah, and plus, like, you know, when you're in the audience, you all think this is part of the act. Like, yep. and it's the same thing, like, take a page from history with uh, Lincoln's assassination. They all thought it was part of the act when he, John Wilkes Booth jumped down from that area after killing him. It's just like, no, they all thought it was part of the act. Mm -hmm. They had no idea that someone was just assassinated. Yep. So naturally, yeah, they wouldn't think... They wouldn't think that this this is, like, sketchy. They're like, oh, no, this is all part of the act. That is, yep. Mm-hmm. But it seems like Sarah's catching on, though. She's just like, uh, I don't know. She has a feeling that's not part of the act. Yep. And they He's got cotton candy now! <laughs> <laughs> cotton candy. Two cotton candies. Two cotton candies. And crazy cats in the background here. Oh, I didn't see crazy cats! <laughs> yep. Oh, that's clever. I didn't see him at first. Yep, crazy cat making a, an appearance. Cool. So, Jerry had this little, you know, dumb guess. Maybe it's Jeff and Taylor, Jeff Taylor and Zach down there. And Sarah's like, as if. As if she lives <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> uh, yes, Jeff. I like David, but not enough to embarrass myself even more. I'm just like, dude, you've already gone this far. Might as well go all out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, so now they're doing their acts. Yep. First time I drew the knife thrower when I yeah. when I looked at references, all the knife throwers have, are, look like cowboys. So I'm like, huh? All right, I'll draw a cowboy mm. as a knife thrower. So Jeff is the victim here. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Luckily, he's with a professional. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, kid. You're the professional. Slit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if that was too loud. Sorry, <laughs> R.I.P. Headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix that in post. Okay. <laughs> Yep. So, so Zach, he's juggling, actually juggling with the Popolo here, and he's like, whoa, is it hot in here, or is it just you? And she's like, concentrate, newbie. I gotta admit, though, like, even though this is all part of Zach's charades, um, he is quite talented. I mean, like, that's hard. Juggling's hard. Mm -hmm. Yep. If it's any of Jeff and Taylor, they would drop those things and mm -hmm. catch on fire. they catch on fire fast. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. Or they'd throw it in the audience. The audience catches the fire. <laughs> The whole tent goes down. <laughs> Jeez. That would happen. Yep. Taylor gets, uh... He gets pied. And Jeff's like, why do you get the fun one? Mm-hmm. Hey, um, it's just like, you You may say it, think it's fun, but I've had people tell me that it's still mildly unsettling, being, like, pied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like, Ugh, and you're sticky afterwards. It's like, yep. Dances with monkeys. Yeah, Zach is dancing with the animals. And I have to have Organ Grinder, you know, do his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there he is. 
And I thought he was doing dances with wolves. <laughs> so I thought that's what you were parroting. You know, like, dances with wolves, dances with monkeys. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of. You know, I had to think of something clever. So I'm like, dances with monkeys. And then, uh, more tricks. We see Jeff getting sawed in half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the truck lift, you know, strong man can lift a big-ass truck. That is, yeah, that's impressive. Taylor <laughs> is more, you know, real. He can't, he can't do it. I'm, I'm happy he didn't throw his back out, because I just saw him just trying to lift it, and all of a sudden he's trying to lift with his back and not his knees, and just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, this panel here, it was originally supposed to be the Crooked Hoss um, um, tightrope. Yes. I tried to draw a, a weird-looking horse. Every angle I tried, the horse looks dumb. <laughs> and I just can't draw a horse to save my life. So I'm like, screw it. It's going to be a trapeze. we got to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yep. Yeah, that moment when you make that decision where you're just like, scrap it, doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Uh, now Marquise has a steak dinner. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's now got a steak dinner. He's got peas and mashed potatoes and dipping sauce. I'm yeah. like, dude, that's awesome. That's yes. like those. That's like something you get in one of those fancy theaters that actually allows you to order like food like that when you're mm -hmm. watching a movie. I don't know if Missoula had that or not. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, fancy theater. So he's got. This is a fancy circus. <laughs> yes. All right. So we so we get to see that uh, Jerry wants to be a clown. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, just because I like dressing up as a clown every Halloween doesn't mean I want to be one. I just like the way their shoes feel. <laughs> Man, I know they look at him weird, but it's just be, it's just like, it'd be interesting if he's just like, not everyone can fit into size eights. <laughs> 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 it's just something like that. It's just like, how dare you look at me for the oddly weird footed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little fun fact. Uh, okay. For Starless, and she is a villain. I was not afraid that she might say something offensive, so she said the word midgets here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, midget is not a, a kind word to say to, to little mm -mm. people, so, yeah, she doesn't care. Yeah, antagonists, villains, and all that, they, they do that. Yeah. They, they don't care. For me, in my comics, I, I add whatever I want, uh, as long as it's within reason. Yes. Um, as long as I make sure a bad guy is saying it. Mm -hmm. Or David. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, David being the oblivious one. <laughs> yeah, same yep. thing. Whenever I show... It's these subtle things. Whenever I show a character smoking, it's usually a bad guy. You know, that's funny. A lot of I remember a lot of the cartoons in the 90s and the early 2000s, that's what they did on their campaign in war against smoking and drugs, was that anyone who was smoking or anything like that in a cartoon, yeah, they were automatically a bad guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know life is a lot more complicated than that, but when you're a kid, it's just like, yeah, that's how they tried to get to you, being like, yeah, don't smoke, this bad guy's smoking, don't do it. Yep. I think they did something like that with the Beavis and Butthead movie. Yeah. When they had, um, when they were in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. every person gambling is an old person. Mm -hmm. That's a little subtle thing they did. You have to be ancient <laughs> wrinkles on your face to gamble. To gamble, yeah. yeah. Right. And these lions, these <laughs> man-eating lions. Oh, man. They are based off of actual boxers. Yeah, I was sitting there wondering what the reference was. <laughs> they are the uh, the Charlo twins. <clears throat> they're, they're world championship boxers, which I don't like them because they have this attitude problem. Mm. And they both beat Austin Trout, you know, one of my favorite boxers. Oh. So, and so they, you made them lions. Yep. <laughs> You're they, like, ha, that'll show them. I'm going to draw you as lions. Take that. <laughs> because they call themselves lions, you know. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and one of their catchphrases is, lions only. Oh, you know, like, okay. So that makes the reference make more sense. Because here I was just seeing you just being like, you beat up one of my boxers. I'm going to draw you as this. I'll teach you. <laughs> just being kind of petty. <laughs> yep. That is. And here we go. Holy man. That, uh, Jeff's oh, the famous catchphrase. saying. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> most people would find that confusing because I know that's like a saying it's on your car. And so then they're like, are you a priest or something? People did ask me that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, so here we go. It's just like you're going to be fed to the lions. So Meanwhile, once again, the audience still thinking that, yeah, this is all part of the act. It's okay, they're not going to really feed them. Mm -hmm. It's like Houdini and the dangerous situations he got into. It's like, don't worry, it's all part of the act. Meanwhile, he actually did get into some harmful situations that almost killed him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right here, Starla is um, 
she she's teasing them with the keys. Yep, bad guy mistake 101. It's just like you gotta present the actual item, be like, ha ha, you'll never get these. <laughs> but eventually, Jeff did by tackling her. Mm-hmm. Throws it to Taylor very quickly. The clowns just uh, clowns charging at him. Taylor throws him at, at, uh, at Zach, who knows how to skateboard. He finds a skateboard in there. So <laughs> you know, I actually always imagine that Zach, like, with the, granted he's like getting into all sorts of trouble, but I always imagine like he was a like someone who just was like a secret society spy or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah, you think he's just some stupid punk kid. But in reality, because he knows how to do all this, skateboard, does throwing acts with all the juggling um, pin pins that are on fire and everything else like that. It's just like, no, in reality, he's actually, <laughs> he knows how to fight. He knows he's a spy and everything else like that. <laughs> yeah. But he just plays off as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he would do something like that. He, he wishes. He wants to be part of the secret society. He wants to be... Or a part of the Secret Service, really. Yeah. He wants to be a master of disguise. He wants to be a spy. He wants to be everything. A- uh, a- anything cool. He's already halfway there with the fact that the guy can actually, like, move and do stuff. Mm-hmm. That probably most, half the kids his age could probably do, so he's already halfway there. <laughs> so right here, he almost escapes. Mm-hmm. But right here, Starla shoots a beam out of her... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do the sound effects. Whoa! <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> he's falling. Right out of there. He is flying right out. That's a hot laser. And yeah, yeah. This is a tiny uh, plot, plot point where the keys just fall right on. Magically of fell into her hands. Yep. Yep. Um. Oh, and Marquise has some ice cream. There's got ice cream! <laughs> is that cookie dough flavor? Or, like, what is that? Uh, mint chocolate chip. Mint chocolate chip. Yeah, that's what it looked familiar to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, here is the big twist, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which is why the keys managed to land all the way to her. She is, uh, a, she's not only the ringmaster, she knows magic. Mm-hmm. Actual magic. So she blasts, um... The faces with the with the uh, the beam. Mm-hmm. It hurt, but it didn't hurt that much. It didn't melt their faces. Yeah, off. I was sitting there just being like, "Wow, Zach took a direct hit, and he got thrown right out of the circus." Meanwhile, these people just have a couple of shreds of clothes. I'm just sitting mm-hmm. here like, "Poor Zach." Yeah. <laughs> he got the short end of the stick. <laughs> yeah. So they um, their friends actually see Jeff and Taylor down there. <laughs> you lucky schmucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's the actual imminent danger, and he's like, wow, I wish I was them. I was like, guys, we're in a serious situation. That's right. Earlier, um, uh, 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 Jerry did say, God, I wish that were me. Mm. That's based off of a dumb meme. Oh. Have you ever seen that? I haven't seen that meme. Okay. Oh, I'll probably put it here in the video. Mm-hmm. So, old grinder tries to calm Starla down. Doesn't work. Then, um... Strongman is like, stand clear, everybody. Captain's gonna do some damage. So Jeff tries to escape her, um, her beams. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think the dog saw a trespasser. <laughs> well, Starla, better get out your <laughs> beam. Mm-hmm. So we can kill the trespasser. Yep, so or he... hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> he throws... <laughs> <laughs> so he throws the ring. He throws the ring at her arm. I actually took a picture of myself for this reference. You know, throwing. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. I actually have a book on throwing poses. I probably should have at least let you borrow it or yeah. something. That way you're not, like, trying to, like, you know, take a picture while trying to hold your form. That would have been nice, yeah. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time. Lesson for life. <laughs> yep. She knows magic. She can float. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so Starla points, um... Uh, the bee right at them again from the air, and sh- I like this pose right here. Oh, yeah. Taylor's like, stop floating, and then she lands right on him. Right on his back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crunch. Ah! <laughs> it's his back because he lifted the car. It's like he's already <laughs> damaged, so it's just like, ah! And then all of a sudden, pop. Oh! <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you popped it back into place! <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> So Marquise has a shish kebab. So shish kebab. <laughs> if you've ever, okay, off um, off topic, you ever had a chicken shrimp shish kebab? 
Oh my god, they're so good. I bet they are. Oh, really good. <laughs> I'm kind of hungry right now, so... Well, let's keep finishing this. <laughs> okay. Alright, We'll so... make the audience want food. <laughs> <laughs> so she she floats Taylor, mm -hmm. and she's about to hit him with the bat. So I thought this was a cool little panel up here. Mm-hmm. Black and white. Yeah. So they crash into a giant drum. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> So Jeff starts to lose hope because they can't go against the person who knows magic. Who knows magic like that, yeah. But Taylor somehow got the keys because um, when she landed on them, mm -hmm. they fell out without her knowing. And right here, we see a little bit of uh, Starla's real power mm -hmm. that she tries to hide due to um, a bad past experiences with her power. Mm -hmm. So she, um... Which the previous, of course, page with her talking with David in the trailer, which is what that plot was about, you kind of got an idea of her past mm -hmm. and what she was uh, had to go through. That's right. So she's getting crazy. The, her, her stick is, uh... Her wand is glowing. So right here, things start to get more serious mm -hmm. as, uh... As her uncle calls her by her real name. Mm-hmm. You made a promise to never do it, go this far again, so... Miley calls, um, Admiral Orion. Not her... related to the constellation in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no relation. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, Admiral Orion is her father. Mm-hmm. So she's about to, uh... Kill Jeff and Taylor. Yeah, I liked that shot actually right there when she was holding the her wand towards like the camera. I was like, that's a good shot. Yep. That's nice. I thought so. That's mm -hmm. why I put it there. <laughs> so you think she's about to shoot the beam, but no, mm -hmm. Zach Cam comes in here with an elephant. I didn't know what the the onomatopoeia for an elephant sound is. So you just like, um, elephant noise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elephant noise. Tech man to the rescue. If only I like how he's got that fun little face in the back when he's on the elephant. Meanwhile, I was sitting there being like, hmm, you should have done the pose that one man did on that one elephant. <laughs> Just like, yeah! Yes. <laughs> he's like doing it. <laughs> Even though that would have been like made no sense because like he wasn't there for that, so he didn't see the guy do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been fun. That would have been fun though. So, so yep, yeah, elephant. Yeah, they they weigh a ton. Like I've seen some videos where people ended up getting hit by their trunks by accident. Oh, the person went f like flying at least a few feet back, and I was like, ooh. Yep. Yeah. So Starla gets knocked out. So or knocked off. So the the giant beam shoots out straight upward. Straight yep, upward. towards the skies. I love this panel. Or this and, page, this whole yeah, page. Yeah, that whole page right there is actually pretty nice. I like that composition. <laughs> yeah, she she shoots down at like a UFO craft. <laughs> <laughs> you see Kay and Kodos up there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we see the 80s couple right there. Actually, I think that's them, right? Yep, 80s couple. There they are, yep. First time I, uh, you see them right there. Yeah, in not the in a poster. Yep. Yep. And I thought this was a nice establishing shot. You see how bright the beam is from mm -hmm. the cityscape. And of course it made a hole in the in the circus tent, so the circus tent falls down. Mm-hmm. Everybody's running away. There's a... More crowd shots! Yay! <laughs> yeah, crowd shots. I kinda cheated because the, the the crowd in the back was just obscure. Yeah, well, hey, you know, and a lot of other professionals will tell you, you know, you got deadlines to meet, dude. You kinda need to just cheat here and there. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Alright, so uh, the, the couple in the far left, they are from the Keenan and Kel movie. Oh. The TV movie. Uh huh. The Shelleys, yep, I added them there. I added my guy, Bernie Sanders, right there. Mm hmm. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Running away. Uh, this is just a random little girl. But there's a Kemi in Talisaria. Oh. Yeah. Kemi is your sister. Yes. Yep. Is true, and uh, Talisaria is your friend or our friend. Mm hmm. We'll be our friend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and as the, as the tent is coming down, Taylor's, they're both on the ground, and then Taylor's like, We should have done my cannon idea. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> yeah. Crash. So, here we go. Patches of time, right here. Yep, there you go. 
So yeah, you guys, uh, you guys remember the Disney film uh, Dumbo? You just imagine when the tent came down right there. That there you go. There, there's your animation shot when everything was just coming down horribly and people were just running for their lives. Yeah. That's kind of what I pictured right there. And uh, we see Jeff all tied up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a circus star, Mom. I just had to um, yeah. include the title. Title of the comic. <laughs> oh, oh, like Peter. He said it. He said it. <laughs> He's all getting excited. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jeff doesn't want the shoes anymore. He, he gave them. He gave them to Jerry. Yay! He, he's so excited. <laughs> Jerry's happy. Yeah. And you may be wondering what the bag that that Zach is holding mm -hmm. that contains their their actual clothes. Oh, okay. Like their street clothes. It's just so. They wouldn't leave the clothes behind because when I was making this, I'm like, they're gonna walk back with the clown outfits. I'm like, they left their clothes behind. I can't do that. So I have a you know, <laughs> Zach uh, hold the uh, the bag. Yeah, he holds the bag of clothes. That makes sense. That or you could always have just done like, a, oh, we left our clothes behind, and then they gotta go shopping for more clothes, and then <laughs> it's just a, they just go to this weird outlet store, and then there's just a rack of the same clothes, and you just see. Jeff and Taylor's like shirts and t-shirt and everything. It's the same freaking shirt. <laughs> it's same, same pants. <laughs> they're all just like, oh, and it's on sale. So they're buying the same clothes <laughs> over and over again. That would be a nice little uh, cartoonish uh, joke there. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Another running gag. The, the fan blowing. Yep, there he is. Blowing in David's face. Ooh. Yeah. All right, this panel here, this, I think this is the last page I worked on because of how, 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 how much work I had to put yeah. in. Yeah. All, all the, all the freaks here, all the mm. circus performers, well, not all of them, but most of most them. Most of them, yeah. Angry elephants. <laughs> Angry elephants in the back. You see a giraffe that you don't see. The bear is back here. Oh, yeah. 80s couple. You see uh, angry animals. Mm-hmm. The chihuahua. Chihuahua and the two cats. Uh, let's see, uh, the frogman has no idea what's going on. He just needs a bucket of flies. A bucket of flies. Yep. So Starla uh, apologizes, kind of. <laughs> so she's about to um, really punish uh, the rest of the... Guys here. Group with them, the yeah. Group, Sarah, yeah. Chris. Now that they've seen what, what shouldn't have been seen. That's right. Marquise looks very off model here. Really? I don't know why. He looks off model. He looks, I don't know, some. Hmm. So a big bright uh, flash uh, shine down. So I made a reference to Monty Python's Flying Circus, <laughs> where Zach is like, it's. A flying circus, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it even has the uh, weird they had theme song playing. <laughs> I got the theme flying. song playing. Copyright is right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, here's another twist. Do you think that Admiral Orion looks uh, like a nice circus performer? No. We see... He's like General Doom <laughs> or something like that. You're in my way, boy. So he has a very menacing voice. That's why I changed the font of the uh, mm -hmm. of this. So yeah, his design is is like a pirate, mm -hmm. but I want him to make him look menacing, like uh, like those old school Final Fantasy villains that have the armor. Oh, uh, okay. So you wouldn't believe that he is uh, Captain Starless' dad, looking mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, he does. Does look like that. Mm -hmm. So we see Starla kind of uh, breaking down right in front of him because you know he insults her, embarrasses her because you know this yeah. is like calling her ashamed of the family. It's just like oh, parenting 101. <laughs> That's so, horrible. <laughs> yeah, he's he, he's not dad of the year or anything. Kind of gives you more of an idea of what she actually her family life was like. See, <laughs> it's how the way he's treating her. It's just like. All of a sudden you look at her, it makes all the sense now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why you are the way you are. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't excuse it, but it, now I can see it. <laughs> He's more of a, you know, he abuses them emotionally. You know, he, he, he doesn't lay a finger on them, but he, but he Still, insults yeah. them. 
still just as bad. Yep. So Taylor finally returns the scarf to Henrietta, and Henrietta's looking all fat and happy. Aww, yeah. cute bird. <laughs> It'd be funny if the bird was actually, like, taking it, like, dang. And <laughs> bird puts it on itself. Yep. <laughs> but it's a hen. Mm-hmm. All right, a little bit of exposition about Starla's uh, mm -hmm. past. Yeah, and at least, like, that's the other cool thing about Miley is that, you know, being her best friend, it's just like, you know, she can still see the good in her, and there probably is actually goodness that the audience can't see, but it's just like, well, she's the one that's probably spent maybe a good 24 hours with Starla, so it's just like, she's seen it. Mm -hmm. All right, as for you, Seven, leave the premises. Don't mention anything to the police. Got it? So, yeah. <laughs> I take a picture of him, pay me $20,000. <laughs> just like, you ever heard of blackmail? <laughs> <laughs> uh, too bad they none of them had cell phones with them. Yeah, true. And I imagine they left it with their clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, fun fact, Jeff and Taylor don't own their own cell phones. Oh, yeah, that's right. Seeing as how they are in middle school, it would kind of be too... Like, granted, kids nowadays are getting cell phones younger and younger. Yeah. But, yeah, judging by um, when you first made this... Yeah, uh, when you were in middle school, you didn't have a cell phone. Like, mm -hmm. not until at least you were in high school. Yeah, people wonder when Jeff and Taylor takes place. I always think modern times, but I don't mm -hmm. really focus on the technology because technology would change. I want to make this timeless. Mm hmm Well, not to mention that sometimes you don't need to even focus on the time because, like, what, what, t what time period it takes place in, some people would be like, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always thought it would take place around uh, 2012 or 2014, around mm -hmm. there. Just stop right there. No. Yeah. And the final... The final shot. Here uh, they are. They're walking home. Everybody's okay. A little traumatized, but okay. Let's see. Let's Surprise, Chris didn't have any food in his hands. <laughs> He managed to walk away from the circus with like a couple things of food. That was a mistake. I, I should have done something like that. <laughs> Guess you could say he was full. Yeah, full. And his brain exploded from mm. what the heck he just processed. <laughs> Best circus ever. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach's just like gonna get into more shenanigans. And it's just like, yeah. <laughs> so that was it. Nice. Episode 15. That It was... It was tedious to make. I, I, I started this, I started drawing back in January, mm -hmm. and then I didn't finish everything until July. Mm -hmm. it, it came out July 27th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and yeah, I, I thank you so much for helping me with it. You, you typed yeah. in the words. No problem. I think more often than not, people kind of forget... Um, just even being a one-man band, like, how long a process, like, even making a manga or a comic can take. And it is, it does take quite a while, especially when you're also trying to juggle a lot of life's issues. So, I was more than willing to, like, volunteer to help, like, put the dialogue balloons in there. It's mm -hmm. something simple, but when it stacks up, it becomes tedious. So, understandable. Yeah. Awesome. And it came out as an awesome episode. <laughs> At least in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we've been recording for almost an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. This is like a podcast, kind of. Yeah, this has now become a giant podcast. Well, that's what happens sometimes when you actually have a second person to talk to. Your time doubles. <laughs> yeah. Every time I record myself doing these, it, it takes me multiple takes because I say something stupid or I forget to say something. At least with a person, you have someone, you know, to bounce off of. Yeah, you can bounce the beach ball back and forth and just, like, go with that. Yeah. Go with the flow. Juggle the beach ball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Make sure it's on fire, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and you and you got a hula hoop at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And jump rope. <laughs> and jump rope. <laughs> while also reciting, like, the words to some stupid pledge or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> pledge allegiance to, uh... To the traveling I, uh, circus. To the circus, <laughs> yeah. Like, the, oh, man, if they hazed their newcomers, that'd be so bad. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, All right, yes. so this has been episode 15. That's right, yeah. The Circus Stars. I recommend, if you want to read the whole thing, go to jeffandtaylorcomic.com. That's jeffandtaylorcomic.com. And not only you can read this episode, you can read others. There's plenty of uh, short Jeff and Taylor quickies, too. And... Yeah, visit the website. You can see character bios and buy my uh, volumes from there. I updated it. 
just the, the you know the the URLs changed on me, so I had to change them. Mm -hmm. My gosh. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll see you guys later in another video. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thanks for having me on. Yep. No problem. I thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. No problem. All right. That's Rosengard. Follow her on Instagram. <laughs> yep. I'm still working on a couple things. But mm -hmm. all the while. Uh, nice talking to everyone in the audience. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Jam him out. See you later.